Hey folks, let's learn some more about the oil and gas industry. Okay, today's show is the second part of the intersection of Lago and your oil and gas marketing strategy. In the first part of the show, you saw how my marketing efforts actually brought in a prospective client. Now, we decided not to do any business with Jeff because, quite frankly, he didn't need us. But what you need to note is the cost of that sale, if we would have sold something, would have been zilch. So it just goes to show you how your marketing efforts drive leads that turn into sales. So in this part of the show, we're going to do something a little bit different, and we're going to actually take the five uh, strategy points that we use when we build oil and gas marketing strategy for our clients, and we're going to actually show you some real-world examples of that in the Lago Show. So, Okay, when we engage with our clients and want to help them formulate an oil and gas marketing strategy, the process is the same, and we have a framework that has five points. So let's kind of go through that real quick so you can understand how we approach this. So the first thing you need to understand is who are your targets? Who are the people that benefit from using your product or service? But more importantly, who are the people that really benefit? It's typically it's an 80-20 mix, where 20% of your clientele are the heavy users of your product and generate 80% of the revenue. So the reason you want to understand who these targets are is so you can go out and find other people just like that. The next thing you need to understand is benefits. What are the benefits of a client using your product or service? Uh, there's an old um, saying in uh, marketing that nobody buys a drill. What people are really buying is the ability to drill lots of little holes. And it's the same way with your benefits. And this is actually one of the places where we see a lot of people make a mistake because they assume they know what the benefits are of their product or service. And come to find out, they're usually wrong. And especially in the oil and gas industry where there's so many different segments and so many different business drivers that are unique in the industry, this is a place where research um, and due diligence really pays off on the bottom line. And then we look at competition. So competition means not just your competitors who sell a similar product or service, but competition could be something like, uh, we don't want to change our process. I see that a lot in oil and gas. You bring a new process or a new product to the market, well, somehow the oil and gas industry is meeting those needs already, right? Even if it's old-fashioned or inefficient, the competition may be the resistance to change, and you need to understand that and be able to qualify that. And then positioning. Once you understand your targets, the benefits you bring to those targets, and what the competition looks like, then you can actually figure out how to position yourself in the market. And I'm going to give you a point here that's unique in the oil and gas industry. Positioning is never about being cheaper. Um, this industry is enormous. The dollars that are spent are gigantic. So coming to the industry and saying, I can do something cheaper, is not the best way to position yourself. In this industry, things like health, safety, environmental, um, operational efficiency, um, competitive differentiators from a, a geophysical point of view, all that sort of stuff helps you with your positioning. Once again, you need to do a deep dive into the client base of those identified targets with those identified benefits to figure out how, how you position yourself in a competitive landscape. And then finally, you take those top four things and it helps you develop your campaign. How are you going to reach out to these prospective clients? You've identified who they are. You have identified what problems they have that you solve. You identify how you do it differently and, and with a bigger business impact than your competition. And you're able to put that together in a campaign. Now, a campaign is, is, can mean a lot of different things. Um, it's, but at a, at a high level, this is how we handle the, the sh uh, framework when we develop a marketing strategy. So let's go look for some real-world examples in Lago. All right, so here is a classic example of just excellent targeting. This is a shout out to Payton, Debbie, and John with Whole Opener Corporation. They know who their clients are after 30 years of business. They know their clients are people that have a need for whole opening, underreaming, and casing cutting. So great job, folks. Y'all can hit the nail on the head and wish y'all another 30 years of big success. So here's a unique take on positioning. This is Kim Ray of Valves and Controls. And they happen to know from their market research that in an oil and gas trade show, their same people that would be their potential clients also have a high probability of having an interest in hot rods. So once again, Kim Ray, what a great job in positioning. And hats off to NOV for just running a perfect campaign. This is a joint effort between their sales and marketing. It was a multi-pronged approach. They attracted a lot of existing clients and also a lot of new clients. So great job, folks. All right, folks, hope you got some benefit from that. We'll see you next time.